Good morning, lovelies. Zoe Two Dots here with some more Pokemon Go goodness for you. And today we're going to go through a bit of a guide on how to get from level 41 to level 50 in Pokemon Go. We're going to break it down by each level with some tips for how to kind of like not not cheat the system, but like strategies, tips and tricks to optimize, to absolutely optimize getting you from 40 to 50. I will timestamp each of the level requirements as well, but there are a few good tips in each one for the good like habits to get into or things to prepare for future levels. So I recommend watching through and then coming back if you need a bit of a refresh on each individual level or what you're up to. Additionally, before we even get started, there are four things I want you to start doing right now. I don't care if you're level 44 or level 24 or level four, These these are four things that you need to be doing right now because they're gonna help you later on. By the end of this, by level 50, there's things like you need to have 35 platinum medals by the end of this. So there's things we can start now that will help for later. So the four things I want you to focus on right now, no matter what your level is. First of all is XP. Seems pretty obvious, right? But the XP will always be counted forward. It doesn't matter if you have more XP than your level requirement. That'll just be sitting there for later on when you need to get to level 44, level 45. It doesn't go off, you know, XP never expires. So whatever you can do now to work towards gaining more bulk XP is gonna save you so much time. There's nothing more frustrating than being, you know, all done with your tasks and then you're sitting there just waiting to grind out XP to hit that next level. It's the thing that's gonna take the longest to do, especially if you're free to play. So XP focus from now, you got this. The best like the chunkiest source of XP in the game is the friendship system. So add some friends. I recommend adding some international friends as well if you can, because this will come into play later. Coordinate with them if they want to. Drop a lucky egg for ultra friend, for best friend. Even if you add a hundred randos from just, you know, comments in YouTube sections and just get to good friend with them, that all adds up too. Raids and excellent throws, another fantastic way to get more XP uh, and evolution. Evolution's a bit more time consuming, but it does add up over time if you're gonna do it anyway or on a two times three times evolution XP day. But just keep in mind that it is quite a slow process compared to just boom, doing a raid. Number two is start working on your medals now. As I said, by the end of this, 35 platinum medals. And some of these can be pretty tricky. I want you to either pause the video right now or at the end of it, pause and make yourself a little list of the medals you're gonna work towards. Now, the best thing about this is that the typing medals do count. So that's 18, 18 medals right there that you can smash out of the park. I really recommend, especially if there's things like community days that feature a fairy type or a dragon type or things you don't see fairly often. Grind out that community day until you have your medal as close as you can to platinum. These are your best opportunities to work towards these type badges besides just your regular catching. But if you get these ones to platinum, that is 18 badges done. 18 for the typing, magic, and then you can focus on a few others. Number three is to start collecting cheap shadow Pokemon to purify later on. You're gonna need a lot of these to purify. And I really recommend just hoarding as many of them as you can feasibly in your storage, but especially keeping the cheap cheap purifications. The Weedles, the Rattata, things like that. You can go through and have a check now which ones they are, but there are some that are the cheapest. 1,000 Stardust to purify versus some that are quite expensive. 5,000 Stardust or the legendaries are just ridiculous for Stardust. So just start collecting them and labeling them. I honestly still have a stash, even as a level 50, I keep a stash of these cheap ones to purify whenever those quests come up for, you know, the rocket days or the, you know, the beat the boss. I still keep a stash of these just so they're cheaper to do on the day. And tip number four, catch everything. I don't care if it's your 40th Pidgey of the day and you're like, ugh, it's just Pidgey. Catch everything. Every single catch is going to equal Stardust, XP, candies. I don't care if you're like, eh, not fussed on the Pokemon, catch it, because you need all of these things to progress. All of these resources are vital. I know it sounds kind of like obvious, like catch the Pokemon, catch them all. But if there's a Pokemon there, catch it. All right, that's it for the general, like getting you started. Let's jump in. Level 41, so the requirements are going to be 6 million XP, power up a legendary Pokemon 20 times, win 30 raids, catch 200 Pokemon in a single day and earn five gold medals. Now, if you've been working hard, you've already got those gold medals done, happy days. This one's pretty straightforward, honestly. Powering up a legendary 20 times, it doesn't have to be the same legendary Pokemon, so you don't have to have, oh no, I don't have any XL to power up my Hundo Rayquaza or my Nundo Rayquaza. You can just put one level of power up into whatever you have candy for. I'd recommend powering up something that you are going to use. Things like Mewtwo, Groudon, Kyogre, those kind of ones always get used. Dialga's great as well but whatever you've got access to. And again, it can just be one power up into 20 different legendaries. 30 raids, it's pretty straightforward. If you're free to play, this is gonna be one free raid per day, but you've likely acquired some premium raid passes from previous special research quests, or if you've done the community day, 
you know, $1 research and things like that, but also keep an eye out for any upcoming events for raid days. We've had plenty of raid days in the past and it seems with things, you know, opening back up, we're going to be getting more of them in the future as well. For example, we recently had the Mega Kangaskhan raid day. I wouldn't be surprised if we get something like that for Heracross later in the year. And with that, we did get a bunch of free raid passes too. So if there's ever an event where you're just going to get free raid passes, that's the time to do it. Hopefully it lines up with when you're on this level. If not, just try and collect as many as you can from special research. For 200 Pokemon in a single day, I'm sure if you're a city player, this is an absolute breeze. If you're rural, this may be harder. So I'd recommend community days or, and or the spotlight hour evenings. And the reason for that is because on community day and on spotlight hours, it's not just the normal spawn pool. There is more spawn points added to the map to kind of like boost the fun. So there's always going to be more spawns during those events. Basically go out for your community day and don't stop until you've got 200. And lastly, the gold medals. As I said, you should already have this done, especially with the typing. Just catching this many of a Pokemon type you should have done this by now, I think, to even get the XP to get to this level. Level 42. So for level 42, we're going to need 7.5 million XP. We need to evolve Eevee into each of its unique evolutions. Evolutions. Use items to evolve Pokemon 15 times. Make three excellent throws. And use 200 berries to help catch Pokemon. So for the Eevee side of things, first of all, start collecting Eevee now. Because for me, when I did this, because Jolteon, Flareon, and Vaporeon are just a random dice roll, it took me at least 15. I think 15 Eevee to get it just because it, I kept getting two of the same two of the same two of the same so Collect more than what you think you need now and put them aside. One good thing to do is you can use the Eevee nickname trick. And if you don't know what this is, it basically means if you nickname your Eevee one of these names, it will allow you to evolve to the corresponding Pokemon. But please, please be aware this is a one time use thing. So if you if you really want to get, you know, a shiny Flareon, Vaporeon or Jolteon, I'd really recommend saving onto the name trick for these. That's what I did because you can only use it once and those three are the random dice roll. At least with the other ones you can control how you evolve them. So even if you get a shiny later on and you're using the name trick now, you can control that shiny's evolution and direct it down the path that you want. I'd really recommend saving the naming trick for the first three for that shiny if you really want to. But for just the general evolutions, the first three evolutions are a random bag, so good luck. For Espeon and Umbreon, you need to walk 10 kilometers with them as your buddy and get two candies as well. And I've seen a lot of people have issue with this because they're like, I walked the 10 kilometers, but it didn't work. You need to get the two candy as well. And then while it is your buddy, either evolve during the day for Espeon or evolve at night for Umbreon. For Leafeon and Glaceon, you'll need to be near a Mossy Law or a Glacial Law respectively to evolve them. And for Sylveon, you need to get 70 buddy hearts. So whack it on as your buddy. I think you have to get at least great buddy with them to get that amount. But this shouldn't honestly take too long, especially if you're doing the feeding and the battles each day, this will add up pretty quickly. Bonus tip for earning buddy hearts, if you battle your Team Go Rocket Balloon, start the battle with your buddy in the party and then just run away, you can do that three times to get the hearts immediately, you don't have to actually finish the rocket battle. And keep in mind, you can kind of prep these evolutions in advance. You can walk with your Umbreon for 10 kilometers, get the two candy and then change to your next Eevee walk the 10 kilometers to candy and just put them aside. Make sure you give them like a really clear label or something so you know those are the ones you've done. But you could be level 24 and do that now and put them aside for this level up later on. You can earn the 70 hearts with Sylveon and then come back to it later. It's not gonna expire. So these are things you can start working on way, way earlier. Just don't actually evolve them until you get to this level requirement. For items, pretty much this is super simple. Type the word item into your Pokemon storage and it's gonna show you every Pokemon that you have that can evolve with an item. Hopefully have got that item on you. You can get all of the items from spinning stops or from your weekly breakthroughs. So make sure that you're finishing your, you know, seven day weekly breakthrough box and getting those items. Honestly, just evolve whatever you have. Bonus points if it's something useful that you, you know, can use for raids or gyms or whatever. But honestly, just smash out the evolutions. Excellent throws. I mean, honestly, the hot tip here is probably legendary raids. They're typically closer to the catch screen. They're larger and they're not that hard to hit excellent throws on once you get the hang of them. You've got, you know, 20 balls to throw at them, hopefully. Otherwise, things like Whelma, even, you know, Nummel and things like that are fairly large and have a fairly easy excellent throw. If you get stuck, there's no shame in asking a friend for help. <laughs> 
And lastly, 200 berries. This is just pretty self-explanatory. Feed, feed the, feed the Pokemon. Again, legendary raids are good for this because it's probably gonna keep jumping out of the ball a lot. So you've got plenty of berries to feed there. Uh, and if you're really just in an absolute rush, maybe you're playing community day or something, you can just bury and run. So you can like encounter, bury, run away, encounter, bury, run away. You don't have to actually catch the Pokemon for it to work. And that's kind of counterproductive. But you know, even if you're, you know, stacking up your research Pokemon, you can bury it, stack it in your research stack, bury it, stack it in the stack. And that will count towards. Level 43, you're going to be needing 9 million XP. And for the tasks, you're going to need to earn 100,000 Stardust, use 200 super effective charge attacks, catch five legendary or mythical Pokemon, and earn five platinum medals. Once again, you better have been working on those medals as we've been going along. The Stardust will honestly happen pretty naturally. It'll happen quicker than you think as well, uh, especially if you're doing any raids or hatching eggs, especially 12 kilometer eggs give you a bunch of Stardust. Opening gifts, feeding berries in gyms, get some Stardust, catching Pokemon, get it done. The charge attacks as well can be used in gyms, they can be used in PVP, in GBL, in raids, you can battle against the team leaders, battle against your friend, or battle against, you know, Team Go Rocket balloons or encounters. Again, pretty straightforward, just make sure you're actually taking Pokemon, you know, into the raid that has the correct typing or battling the gym with something that has got super effective typing. Now, five legendaries or mythical Pokemon, the easiest way to get this done is to use a mystery box or a Meltan box. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, there's plenty of guides online for how to actually, you know, unlock the mystery box. Super simple is to get yourself Pokemon home, make yourself an account and transfer from your phone Pokemon Go app any Pokemon, it could be a regular Pidgey. Transfer a Pokemon to Pokemon Home. Once that's done, hey, congrats, you can now use a mystery box. And with this Meltan spawning pretty much every 60 seconds, you're gonna have five Meltan in five minutes. Otherwise, of course, legendary raids, etc. And for the Platinum Medals, I want to go, kind of go over a few that I would recommend maybe focusing on. As I said before, the easiest ones are gonna be the Typing Medals, catching Pokemon of a certain type. The next easiest I would probably say is the Pokédex, the, you know, the Pokemon badge ones done. So for each generation, there is a medal for completing that Pokédex. If you've been playing since day one, you've probably more than done, you know, special events where Kangaskhan, Mr. Mime, you know, regionals were available in eggs or in raids. If not, ask a local, ask a friend and start getting some trades in. If you're just missing one regional, ask people. There's probably gonna be more people than you realize that have either traveled to go get these things or went to a safari zone and they've got a bag full of 50 of them they're just waiting to get rid of. Just ask. Otherwise these badges are just really easy to get done. The scientist badge is also a pretty good one to try and get done because it's just evolutions. You could bulk evolve Weedle, Pidgey, Caterpie, the really cheap evolutions. Stack them up and just smash them out on a double XP evolution night and you'll be flying through that medal in no time. The Berry Master one is pretty long haul I think but I'm, I'm gonna recommend it here because it is one you can do from home. As long as you've gone out and put yourself in a gym and you know not been kicked out hopefully you can feed the berries from home by going to this part of the menu here it's gonna like noom, take you to the gym and you can feed not only your Pokemon but every Pokemon in that gym. Additional bonuses for this is you're gonna get Stardust and you're also gonna get a chance to get a candy or candy XL from that Pokemon that you're feeding. I used this method to try and grind out XL candy, or grind out the slow grind, XL candy for Lickitung when our level 50 first came out. It is a long one to get done, but the berry cooldown resets every 30 minutes. So in reality, you could just be going logging back in and doing a whole bunch of berries every 30 minutes and just kind of like use all the pine. What are you using Nana berries for? What are you using Nana berries for? Feed them to gyms and work towards this metal. The ranger task I recommend as well for completing research tasks especially community days because those comm day tasks are like catch five of the Pokemon that's literally everywhere it's really easy to get done especially if you're in a city just start smashing out the task bang, 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 bang. and lastly the idle task which is reach best friend with 20 trainers for the platinum level which I think is pretty feasible it again it's a long haul task you have to make sure you're both opening and interacting every day to make it go smoothly but it's only 20 only 20 people. So in the grand scheme of things, that one's probably really, really attainable. All right, level 44. And before you freak out, let me just finish these sentences. So first of all, 11 million XP will be required. And then win 30 trainer battles in the Great League, win 30 trainer battles in the Ultra League, win 30 trainer battles in the Master League, and win 20 trainer battles in Go Battle League. Now, before, just, before, you, before you just rage quit this video, that you do not, you do not have to do all of these in Go Battle League. You do not have to win 
bloody 90 battles in the Go Battle League. That's not what this is. Exhale, breathe, it's all good. You do have to win 20, which I'm gonna give you some tips, you'll be right. If you want to, of course, go do Go Battle League because that's gonna be like covering two things at once, you know? But for the Great Ultra and Master League battles, you can battle a friend and here's what you do. You go find that friend, you go buy them a piece of cake, a coffee, whatever they want, and you say, please, can we do some battles? And then one of you makes a team of 10 CP Pokemon. The other one takes in literally whatever, take in Mewtwo, whatever you can fit into that league. You start the battle with each other. The 10 CP person, all you have to do is to make sure to pick the next Pokemon so it doesn't take time. And then the person with the strong stuff just blasts through your team, rinse and repeat say thank you at the end. Again, mildly time consuming, but way faster than actually doing this many battles. Again, if you like PvP, go do PvP, have a good time with it. I like PvP, but towards the end there, I was just doing 10 CP battles. <laughs> and for winning in the Go Battle League. Now again, don't stress. Uh, my top tips for this would be to, once a new season starts, like if you hit this level requirement when a new season is about to start, I would say wait until a week after the season has started. That means all of the you know elite players, all of the pros, they're, they're gone. They're already done. They're already ranked up to level a billion because they're crazy at this game then get in there and do some battles you're gonna be versing other people that have no clue what to do just like you potentially but here is my team recommendation for you i have made this team for alan he's used it every time there's been battle tasks he needs to get done alan doesn't know what a fairy type is weak to what a does he know if, even if steel types are in the game i don't know and this has worked for him so you can do it i'm sure you know more than him about typings the team i'd recommend is whizcash it is only weak to grass an ivysaur or a venusaur both are good yes you can use mid stage evolutions in GBL and a fire type of your choice. If you did, you know, the uh, Fletchling community day, you probably have enough candy to, you know, evolve one and have one there. Any fire type that you're feeling. Make yourself a little list, write it down, super simple. It doesn't have to be like a, a, a amazing graph. Write down your team, Whizcash, Ivysaur, your fire type. Write down what they're weak to. Whizcash, only weak to grass. Ivysaur, weak to fire, XYZ. Make your little list. Go into the battles and then only swap if if you're if someone's using something super effective against you basically so if you start with ivysaur and they've got a charizard probably swap swap out to the Wizcash and hope that they don't then swap into a grass type but otherwise just go in and smash them out you're going to get these battles done really really quickly it might take you a couple of days to get all of the wins but it's honestly not going to be as hard as what you think and it's okay if you lose because if you lose it will drop your ranking and you're just going to verse other people that have less and less clue about the, what they're doing or literal children if you want to know what moves to put on your pokemon i really recommend using pvpoke.com they have got first of all the rankings what the best moves are going to be and then you can also like build a team in there and it will tell you kind of like like if you're doing good, if you're doing bad, don't worry if they're not like the best PvP IV Pokemon. It doesn't matter. You can get this done really easily. And you, you never know, you might end up enjoying PvP. It is honestly a good fun time, especially the flavor cups, like the spice cups, they're great. Level 45, you're gonna need 13 million XP. You're gonna need to defeat 100 Team Go Rocket Grunts. Purify 100 Shadow Pokemon. That's why I said start collecting them earlier. Defeat a Team Go Rocket Leader 50 times and earn 10 platinum medals look there's there's no quick way around this this is gonna it's gonna be a long one it's it, it is just gonna be a long one especially like if, you, if you're looking at that and you're like oh it's only 50 leaders but if you're doing this free to play you need to battle a team rocket grunt six times to get one rocket pass to defeat the leaders now i'm no maths wizard but i'm gonna go ahead and say that six times 50 is more than 100 battles so if you're doing this free to play it's just gonna be it is what it is ideally hopefully maybe there is a go rocket event and you can walk around your city Battle those six, find a leader. Battle six more, find a leader. Hopefully your balloons are timed nicely as well. At the very least, um, there are, you know, shadow shinies from the leader that you could hopefully, hopefully encounter one. But long story short, it's gonna take a hot second. The only alternative is if you have acquired any of the, the Go Rocket radars uh, from Special Research, which I think every comm day, if you have done, you know, the $1 research and things like that, they're pretty frequently given as rewards in that or other Special Research. So hopefully you've got a little stash, if not, start maybe collecting a few in the lead up to this level or you can use your free gym coins towards purchasing rocket radars as i mentioned before the hundred purifications hopefully you've got that stash and if you don't have a stash you're going to have a stash by the end of this quest of cheap purifications the weedles the starly it is going to be a stardust investment but these are the cheapest ones the 1000 stardust ones are the cheapest just 
If you want to save dust, I really recommend only purifying those ones. Level 46. You're going to need 15.5 million XP. You'll need to complete 100 research tasks, take a snapshot of a Pokemon seven days in a row, make 50 excellent throws, and hatch 30 eggs. Again, this one's going to be a little, it's going to take a bit of time, especially the 30 eggs thing. If you're not using, you know, super incubators or purchasing incubators, hopefully, again, hopefully you've acquired some through special research, but you're going to have to put in that effort with either the walking or um, putting on Adventure Sync. I really recommend putting on Adventure Sync, even though it is fairly buggy. If it just flat out doesn't work for you, you might need to kind of like restart or reinstall the app. Double double check it because once you get it working, it does help in the background. So for Adventure Sync, if the game is closed and turned off and all that jazz, um, any, you know, activity that you do, if you go for a run or if you go, hopefully, you know, you've got this in your side pocket and you're lifting weights at the gym, all those little bits of movement will add up towards Adventure Sync. Again, I know it can be pretty buggy and inaccurate, but it all counts, right? And it's just going to take time. It is what it is. 50 excellent throws again. Aim for those big chonky spawns. Legendaries, again, a nice one to try and work on. Ask a friend if you get stuck, it's okay. The 100 research tasks, again, community day. Go to a city, community day, smash it out. If not, if you're rural, it is just gonna take longer and make sure that you're doing your daily task that you get given in game. We get given a, a you know a free research task to do every single day. Even if you're not super, you know, woo, keen on it, just do it, get it done, it all adds up. And take a snapshot of a Pokemon seven days in a row, set an alarm. Set an alarm in your, in your phone, you will forget on the sixth day and then you'll get really frustrated if that was the last thing you had to get done. So just trust me. Try, this is the 30 buddy interactions. To, oh, I forgot to message Alan. Oh, he was at like 10 days. I forgot to remind. So now I, sh I should set me an alarm. 30 buddy interactions in a day, things like that. Anytime there's a, th a thing that you have to do, spin 30 stops, whatever it is, set an alarm. <laughs> set an alarm, trust me. D proof. Set an alarm. Level 47. You're gonna need 18 million XP. Win 30 raids using a team of all unique Pokemon. Win a three star raid using only Pokemon with 1,500 CP or less. Power up three Pokemon to their max CP and earn 20 platinum medals. Again, I hope you've been working on those medals. So win 30 raids using unique species. Honestly, not that hard. Half the time auto recommend will recommend you just a bunch of random stuff. If not, Again, this is one that I, I, when I was doing this level, I kept forgetting until I saw the like, oh, congrats, you just, you got, you ticked off a part of that research. And I was like, oh no, I've just done 10 raids on like a raid day that I could have been doing. So try to stay on top of this one when you get to it. Bonus points if you go through and make yourself some pre-prepared battle teams in the battle menu. And then that way you can just swipe towards that team, set it and forget it. You've got your team of unique Pokemon. Happy days. You can do this against level ones. You could take a team of like pff, Diglett and Vulpix and whatever to go and verse like a, a rock rough raid or something. Bonus points if you double this one up with the under 1500 CP task. Again, this one's really good. You can honestly just get your friends to carry you. If you've got enough friends in the raid to get it done anyway, Way. you can just kind of sit in the in the battle and just dodge just jump around the map and stay alive you know if you're faint you can just sit in the lobby and just wait for them to carry you uh, or you can just, you know participate in the battle it's not gonna be that hard it's not really not gonna be that hard to get this one done just make sure if you do re-lobby and rejoin that you do select 1500 cp or less pokemon you don't just auto go in with the strong boys getting three pokemon to level 50 uh, i don't think you can do this one in advance. I really don't know. I've had someone ask me this and I haven't been able to really double check this. So I don't know if you've already powered some up to level 50. I don't know. If you know and you've done it, leave a comment uh, in down below. I'll, I'll pin it or I'll give it a heart or something. But I'm pretty sure you need to actively do the powering up once you get to this requirement. So just keep that in mind. Anything you've done previously may not count towards this. Again, community day keeps coming back up as a hot tip, but you can honestly, this has been proof positive from day one when level 50 first dropped in Australia. First community day, I was pineapping every single catch, extra points if you want to trade them with a friend first to get an extra candy there, or distance trade them with a friend to get three, four extra candy there and XL candy from the trade. And then finally, either depending where you're up to with the candy, just transferring all of them for extra, tra transferring like 99% of them for the extra candy or hold on to those Pokemon, double candy transfer day, transfer them then. 
you're gonna easily in one community day have enough candy to max out that featured Pokemon. As long as you're actively playing and catching as much as you can, and then again, bonus points for the trading, you can get it done. Ideally as well now that you can actually accrue XL candy at a far lower level now in Pokemon Go, hopefully by the time you reach this level, you'll just have a few things that you have got enough candy for to hit level 50. A big one I would keep in mind is Pikachu. Because Pikachu is featured for so many events, how many had a Pikachu have you had? It gets featured for Halloween, for Christmas, for you know the TCG event, for Go Fests, all that kind of jazz, you probably have more Pikachu candy than you realize and you can convert regular candy into XL candy as well if you get stuck. But make sure you've done like the regular power up bit first so you're not just out of candy all in, altogether. And as much as I'd recommend, you know, maxing out something that you're gonna be using long-term, it is pretty expensive to max out a legendary. I don't have any level 50 legendaries because I'm pretty casual about legendary raids. Once I've got my shiny, I don't really do that many more of the raids. <laughs> Maybe I should, but I don't have that desire. My first level 50 Pokemon was like a Magby and a Wooper because it was funny and because it, it's what I had candy for. So honestly, there's no, sh max out whatever you want. Max out whatever your heart desires. I've got a level 50 Bidoof because why not? Why not? You know? Yes, it's going to cost you some stardust, but at the end of the day, you can always get that back through raiding, catching, hatching, all that jazz. Level 48. You're going to need 21 million XP, receive 20 souvenirs from your buddy, earn 300 hearts with your buddy, walk 200 kilometers with your buddy, and walk 25 kilometers in a week eight times. So this is another one that's just full stop a long one because it is time gated. So you need, essentially, assuming you don't miss a week, you need eight weeks months to get this task done. So first of all, 20 souvenirs with the buddy, pretty easy. Just make sure your buddy's on and alert for the day. Go for a walk wherever. It's just going to happen pretty naturally. Make sure as well that the buddy you've got on is an ultra buddy. Otherwise, you're not going to be getting the souvenirs, by the way. Earn 300 hearts with your buddy. Now, this one is going to take a bit longer, but here's a way you can kind of like work through a bit quicker. So you can actually swap your buddy 20 times in one day. For this to be most effective, you want to just put, pick 20 different buddies to swap out to because their hearts don't reset during the day, the hearts stay. So sit down in the evening, get your first buddy out, photo feed and pat. Bonus points if it happens to be around the time where your Team Rocket Balloon comes in, you can start that Team Rocket battle with your buddy in the party. Start the battle, run away. Start the battle, run away. Start the battle, run away. That's your three battle hearts done as well. You don't have to finish the battle, just have to start it. And then swap to your next buddy, rinse and repeat. Feed photo pat and do your three battles three attempts at a battle. And again, you can do that 20 times in one night. It's all gonna add up really quickly. Otherwise, just set your buddy and go about your life for the next eight weeks, because it's gonna probably take that long. Uh, anyway, if you wanna do it, you know, organically and not do all the swappy swaps. 200 kilometers with the buddy, pretty self-explanatory. It doesn't have to be the same singular buddy. It can be a mixture of buddies, but you're gonna be walking a lot. And you're gonna need to walk a lot anyway because of the, the general challenge the 25 kilometers per week for eight weeks. So that means that for, it, it doesn't matter if you, it doesn't matter if you miss a week in the middle there, you're not gonna get reset. Um, it just means that you won't, you, you kind of like spent a week and you didn't get that. Now 25 kilometers per week works out to be about uh, 23 kilometers per day or 2.3 miles per day. But I'd really recommend setting an alarm for Thursday just to check in. Uh, I know for myself on this one, I ended up doing Oh my God, how many like Sunday nights or Monday mornings before 9 a.m. trying to like smash out that last few kilometers because I just didn't walk enough through the, my regular week. Again, turn Adventure Sync on, it's buggy, but every drop counts, you know? As I said, I really recommend if you can get that 3.6 kilometers in each day. Um, I know that's a bit harder, maybe if you have an office job or if you're stuck at home and things like that, it's gonna be a tricky one to get done. But if it's possible, if you can stretch that, I, I, again, really recommend doing it through the weekday rather than, you know, checking that alarm on Thursday and going, oh no, I have like, like 20 more kilometers to get done over Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It becomes a bit more like stressful and less feasible. Level 49, home stretch. You're gonna need 25 million XP. Make 10 trades with a Pokemon caught at least 300 kilometers apart. Obtain 50 lucky Pokemon through trades. Send 500 gifts to friends and earn 35 platinum medals. This is where the whole adding international friends idea comes in. Of course, they don't have to be international, just 300 kilometers away, but the further, the further you go, the more distance it's gonna help you work towards certain badges as well. So if you didn't know, if you've got an international friend and you open a gift from them and you get an egg, that egg is going to be located, you know, from where they sent you the egg from. So for example, for me in Australia, my best trade distance is uh, like people that are in Spain or Portugal. 
amazing trade distance. If I open up the Portuguese egg and I hatch that and then I can just trade that with Alan or something, I can trade Alan that Portuguese egg Pokemon. He can give me something from Australia. Boom, amazing, like 18,000 kilometers. Mwah, beautiful. That's gonna be the easiest easiest way unless you regularly you know travel 300 kilometers away from home bring those pokemon back that's obviously another option as well or find a friend or someone in your community who has already got distance pokemon again just ask it's really really simple just ask hey who's got some international some distance trades can we smash out a couple of trades thank you very much for the 50 lucky trades simple answer is bulk trades every single day hit that 100 trade cap every day if you can the odds for a lucky Pokemon in trades is one in 20. So if, you, if you're doing the maths there, that's an average of five luckies per batch of 100. Now, of course you could get more. Congratulations, you lucky duck. Keep in mind as well, trades from uh, 2016 are a one in four chance, which is amazing, but not a lot of people want to part with their 2016 Pokemon. Find a friend who's maybe quit the game or hasn't played, maybe they've come back recently and just ask them, hey, do you have a bunch of old stuff? Can we trade? Take their old stuff, give them whatever new stuff, and that's gonna increase your odds for getting luckies. Now, the thing with the 2016 trades, uh, it, it gets, there's a lot of detail for this, but there's a set of guaranteed lucky trades. If someone has never done any trades, any luckies, there is a way to get guaranteed luckies by trading with that person with 2016 Pokemon to force luckies. It's, it's pretty complicated. Well, not complicated, it's, it's just a lot of explaining, um, but there are plenty of videos going into that for how to get those guaranteed 2016 luckies. Keep that in mind if you are gonna be trading with a friend who's you know never traded before. Additionally, anything over two years old as well, will have that one in four chance to go lucky. So again, find that friend who hasn't played, maybe they like stopped playing 2019 or whatever. Uh, all of those more than two year old Pokemon will also be giving you that one in four chance, so. I recommend focusing those. Even check your own storage. You probably have a bunch of stuff you just forgot to clear out from like a community day that you can use. And sending 500 gifts to friends. So you can do this in five days. As long as you're somewhere you can spin enough Pokestops, you can get this done in five days. And assuming your friends open their darn gifts, but you can send daily over 100 gifts. So it's, the number varies depending on who you are, but essentially you can pick up from Pokestops 100 gifts per day. You could also send the 20 that you're already holding in your inventory from yesterday, maybe you forgot to send them. And also your buddy can go and find you gifts throughout the day. And the amount kind of varies depending on your local Pokestops. So you can send more than 100. You can only, the, the thing is you're, you're capped at holding holding 20 at a time, which is pretty annoying, but you can acquire more. Top tip here being ask your friends to open their gifts. Let them know that you're on this level and you're working towards it. Uh, communication is key. Don't just assume that they know, maybe they're like super slack about opening gifts. Just say, hey, hey, please help, please open. And again, this is kind of like where that adding a bunch of randoms or adding a bunch of people from your community is gonna come in later on as well. The more friends you have, the more kind of like gifty options you have got as well. And lastly, level 50. So for level 50, you're gonna need 30 million XP and you're gonna need to make 999 excellent throws. You'll need to catch a legendary Pokemon in your next five legendary Pokemon encounters. That one's worded weird, we'll go into it. Defeat a Team Go Rocket leader three times using only Pokemon with 2,500 CP or less and reach level 10 in Go Battle League. Now, for, I guess we'll start at the back. Uh, reaching level 10 in Go Battle League. If you've already reached it earlier in the season, happy days, it's done. If you're unlucky, like oh, what I think I was, and the season changes right when you get to this level, you will have to battle your way back up. But again, there's a whole bunch of guides, really fantastic guides on like how to get to level 10 in PVP. Again, it's not gonna be that hard. It's just gonna be a fair bit of time. And even then, not a crazy amount of time. Again, if Alan can do it, if Alan can do it, you can do it. For the 999 excellent throws, just try. Honestly, every time you encounter a Pokemon, just look at it and go, okay, I think I need to wait until here to throw. You're not gonna hit it every time, but just start trying. Again, legendaries are bigger, Whalmer and those sorts of things are bigger and easier. And look, if I can nail an excellent throw on a shiny Zubat at like midnight, after an entire evening out at a, at a, at a secret whiskey bar, you can do it. If, if I can hit that throw, you can do it too. It is honestly one of the hardest ones to hit, but there's plenty of things that aren't hard. Especially if there's a week long event, get really familiar. If you're seeing Charmander every day for that event, just start, get good, focus up, do your best. Again, ask a friend if you really get stuck, but that's gonna be a lot of pieces of cake to ask them, I think, to do 999 throws. Even if you absolutely suck at throwing, it's probably still gonna happen eventually, even just with random throws, eventually, by the law of odds. If you're hitting the Pokemon, 
you're eventually going to hit that many excellent throws. So for the catching a legendary Pokemon for your next five legendary encounters basically means don't let the legendary run away. So for five legendary straight, you need to catch them and not let them run away or you don't run away. Again, if you're using Golden Raz and hitting excellent throws or hitting great throws, this should be fairly achievable, but there's always that there's always that time with that one, that one that gets away. I'm not sure if you can use a Meltan box for this task. Um, Meltan's a mythical Pokemon, but sometimes the legendary and mythical tasks get a little bit, you know, they get a little bit. I don't know. If you know, leave a comment, let people know. I'll leave a little heart on that comment. I don't know if you can use the Meltan mystery boxes for this task, but again, golden raspberry on those legendary raids, fingers crossed, just don't let it run away. <laughs> for five encounters in a row. Defeat Team Garrocket using the 2500 CP team. Again, not super undoable. Sometimes, however, it kind of is, depending on your knowledge of battles and things like that. So I, I remember, was it a few months back, there was just one combination of Sierra's team that was just like, was it the Houndoom? The Houndoom would just eat, eat through your team, no matter what you brought. It's just that if it had that one particular fast move, it was, impossible just about even with a fully team of like maxed out stuff because the team of rocket leaders change you know what pokemon they've got every now and then check out pokemon go hub check out go hub for their resources on you know the flavor of the month the flavor of the season what does team go rocket have uh, and what to you know optimal teams to use against them sometimes there will just be that one pokemon in the middle that is a absolute pest to deal with so ideally if you encounter that one just walk away find a different boss to deal with that month i think for one particular month it was like arlo had the easiest you know any combination of team was the easiest to beat so focus on that one if that is you know what's going to be easiest for you for me for this task it did take me a fair few encounters of re-attempts to try and get you know the right combination of pokemon in so don't get don't get defeated if it does take you a little while to do it. Additionally, I would recommend using uh, any Pokemon that can kind of like spam out shields. So if you've got a really fast, fast attacking, quick charging charge move, and you can just spam out the shields. And then also um, doing like cheeky swaps to get extra time. So the reason for the shield baiting or shield using and the swaps is every time you swap in a Pokemon, every time the Go Rocket Leader swaps in a Pokemon, or any time either of you use a shield, there'll be a couple of seconds where the Team Go Rocket boss does not attack. So if you start the battle, get a couple of hits in, and then as soon as they start to attack you, you swap into what would actually, you know, be the better counter or would actually be your spammy Pokemon. And then when you swap that Pokemon in, you have a couple of free seconds where you can hit, hit, hit before they start attacking again. Now, hopefully by this point, you know, you can get to a charge move. Again, pop off the charge move, use their shield. Their shield goes up and you get time to hit, hit, hit before they restart fighting you again. So uh, if you get familiar with that strategy, it's really, really good. And it's gonna help save, you know, keep your Pokemon alive. And again, you can get it done. Just have a peep online. Who's the current set of teams? Who's got the easiest team and go for gold. You got this champion. And that's it. Congratu congratulations. You've made it to level 50 or at the very least it's in your mind's eye as a goal. If you have got any other hot tips or if there's something you think that I totally missed in this, leave a comment down below or if there's ways that you've, you know, finessed certain XP grinding tips or other ways to kind of like make these tasks work for you, leave a comment. I'm going to leave a heart on all of the best tips uh, in the comments as well. And if you have any questions to be sure to leave them down below as well. I know it's a lot of information. If you missed anything, feel free to watch it again. Or as I said, everything is timestamped in the description. I hope this helps you out. Good luck on your grind to level 50 or congratulations if you've already made it there. As always, lovelies, thank you so, so much for watching. If you are new, please be sure to subscribe. Thank you to everyone who did leave a like as well. And if you'd like additional ways to support the channel, links for Patreon and the merch are in the description down below. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful morning, noon, night, whatever time it is for you. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.